Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel Forexer. In this video, we will explain the concept of supply and demand areas and explore how they differ from traditional support and resistance levels. We'll also show you the best technique to identify high quality supply and demand zones using smart money concepts. Lastly, we're going to cover a confirmation entry setup in the lower time frames to trade supply and demand more confidently. Understanding this will give you a significant advantage as you'll be trading in alignment with big institutions and on the correct side of the market. So if that's something you're interested in, please make sure to hit the like button to show your support and subscribe to our channel if you're new. Starting with the basics, let's explain what support and resistance are. Support and resistance are zones where the price has reacted in the past and could react once more in the future. On the chart, you'll notice that the price has risen and then reversed upon reaching a particular level. We refer to this level as resistance, signifying that for various reasons, sellers have initiated short positions while buyers have closed their long positions. It's this combination of actions that triggers a price reversal in this area. Subsequently, the price has declined, touched this same level, and then reversed once more, establishing it as AI support zone. This indicates that sellers have closed their short positions and buyers have opened long positions once again, showcasing the dual activity that drives price reversals from this area. Now, why do we need to mark these zones on the chart? There are three important reasons. One, high likelihood of rejection. Price levels that have triggered reactions in the past carry a significant probability of experiencing rejection once more. Consequently, when we near these levels, it's imperative to meticulously monitor price action, anticipating a potential rejection. This vigilance is especially valuable when establishing profit targets, particularly if they align with key levels on higher time frames. Even a minor reaction at these levels can catalyze a substantial reversal on shorter time frames. Number two, identifying the market direction. When the price breaks through a resistance level, it signifies that buyers have successfully surpassed sellers, indicating bullish momentum and the potential for further upward movement. Similarly, a break below a support level indicates bearish momentum. Therefore, it's essential to align our trades with the prevailing trend. Identifying the direction is our initial step when analyzing candlestick charts. Number three, identifying liquidity. We are well aware that when the price reaches support and resistance levels, price action traders actively seek trading opportunities, often focusing on breaks and retests. In these scenarios, traders may opt to buy the pair if they detect signs of rejection within the zone, setting their stop-loss orders just below this level in anticipation of an upward continuation. However, it's important to consider liquidity at these levels. In cases where there isn't sufficient liquidity to propel the price higher, there's a notable risk that the market might breach this level, capture the available liquidity, and then proceed with an upward push. Thus, if our entry point is positioned below this level, it can serve as a double confirmation that we are likely to witness the desired market movements. Therefore, traditional support and resistance levels are also regarded as liquidity zones. What is the supply and demand area in smart money concepts? Supply and demand areas form on the chart when smart money enters the market, causing significant price movement. We cannot label it as a demand zone when we observe rejections with multiple small candles. A legitimate demand zone takes shape on the chart when the market generates large candles, signaling robust buying pressure. These momentum candles convey that prominent institutions, banks, hedge funds, or essentially the smart money, are active in the market. Conversely, a valid supply zone emerges when we witness assertive bearish momentum prevailing in the market. How do we gauge the aggressiveness of a price movement? We achieve this by pinpointing fair value gaps on the chart. A fair value gap represents the space between the wicks of the first and last candle within a three candle sequence. The size of the gap serves as a direct indicator of the movement's level of aggression. The larger the gap, the more pronounced the aggressive movement. The fair value gap serves as an indication of an imbalance between buyers and sellers, signifying a substantial influx of capital into the market. Usually, the price revisits these areas to fulfill the orders that were previously left unexecuted thereby restoring a sense of equilibrium. Another critical criterion for validating a supply or demand area is the confirmation obtained through breaking a structural level. This confirmation serves as a pivotal indication of potential market movement and greatly assists in making well-informed trading decisions if you're unsure about it. 
The concepts related to market structure, we recommend watching our previous videos on this topic first. You can find the links to these videos in the description. Now, let's delve into how to mark the supply and demand zones on the chart. Starting with the basics, the initial step involves identifying fair value gaps and breaks on the chart. Once we identify a move that meets these criteria, we proceed to mark the demand zone. Here's how it's done. Look for it. A move that fulfills the criteria of fair value gaps and structural breaks on the chart. To mark the demand zone, draw a rectangle extending from the high to the low of the last candle that generated the fair value gaps. This rectangle represents our identified demand zone, where we believe significant trading decisions were made during the formation of that candle. The same concept applies to the bearish scenario. Regardless of the candle's color, we will mark the last candle that created the fair value gap on the chart as our supply zone. There are various ways that traders mark these zones on the chart, but the key point here is that your stop loss must be placed in a safe position to account for market fluctuations. Now, we mark three types of supply and demand zones on the chart based on the market structure formation. These include order blocks, order flows, and consolidation areas. Order blocks represent strategically optimized supply and demand areas. Here, we witness aggressive buying activity characterized by clear fair value gaps, leading to a structural break. The most recent candle that generated these fair value gaps serves as our reference point. Take note of how the price efficiently swept the liquidity below this candle before, embarking on an upward trajectory. Now, a crucial question arises. Where should we place our stop loss if we decide to set a buy limit at this order block? The safest location for our stop loss is positioned just below the wick where the upward movement initiated. Hence, we incorporate this area into our order block zone as well. Then, we patiently await a correction, seizing trading opportunities as they materialize. Once again, here we have the last candle that caused this market inefficiency. But the question remains, where should we position our stop to shield ourselves from market fluctuations? The answer lies just above this swing high. Consequently, we'll include this area within our order block zone. Admittedly, this might expand both the trading zone and our stop. However, in a subsequent part of this video, I will demonstrate how to optimize your entry in such situations, allowing you to enter at a more favorable price. However, there are instances when order blocks take the form of candles with opposite colors right in the midst of intense market movements. It's a well-known fact that institutions and major players favor these zones for executing their remaining orders. Hence, we also classify these zones as order blocks and actively seek trading opportunities when the price revisits these levels. Now, let me elucidate the second supply and demand zone we mark on the chart, which is the order flow. But before we proceed, if you found value in this video thus far, as always, please show your support by hitting the like button and consider subscribing to our channel if you're new. HankoTrade is a broker that stands out in the highly competitive world of online trading. They offer a comprehensive range of trading instruments, including forex, commodities, and indices, with tight spreads and lightning, fast execution speeds. Their trading platform is user-friendly and intuitive, making it easy for traders of all levels to manage their trades and access real-time market data. In addition, HankoTrade provides traders with a range of powerful trading tools, including advanced charting and technical analysis tools, to help them make informed trading decisions. But what really sets HankoTrade apart is their promotional offers section. This section is packed with exciting bonuses and rewards for traders, including a generous 100 deposit bonus, a cashback program, and a range of trading contests with incredible prizes. These promotions give traders the opportunity to earn extra income and take their trading to the next level. HankoTrade is also committed to providing traders with the educational resources they need to succeed. Their website features a range of educational materials, including webinars, video tutorials, and market analysis to help traders improve their skills and stay up to date with the latest market trends. Overall, HankoTrade is a first-class broker that offers traders a wealth of features and benefits. So, if you're looking for a broker that can help you achieve your trading goals, look no further than HankoTrade. Sign up today using the link in the description and start enjoying all the great features and benefits that this broker has to offer.
Order flow represents an area where significant buying or selling pressure was accumulating before a forceful market movement. The bullish order flow zone represents where the most recent bearish pressure existed before the market shifted to a bullish phase. Conversely, the bearish order flow zone is where the last noticeable bullish pressure was observed before a bearish movement unfolded. It's important to emphasize that order flow areas hold significance as key supply and demand zones within the framework of smart money concepts. For example, in this situation, we notice a movie that creates gaps in value and breaks the market structure. These two candles represent the last bearish momentum just before a significant and dramatic shift in the market, so we mark them. The order flow area can be quite extensive and typically includes the order block within it. At times, the price may change direction before reaching our order block, causing us to miss the trade because it gets rejected from the order flow area. However, this situation highlights the importance of carefully monitoring the market structure for making better trade decisions. The final important supply and demand zone is the consolidation area. Consolidation areas form when both buyers and sellers lack the strength to push the market into a clear trend, creating a feeling that the price is stuck within a range. This situation continues as liquidity gathers, eventually resulting in a breakout in one direction. At that point, the consolidation area transforms into a crucial supply or demand zone for traders. However, it's important to note that we still require some level of imbalance before considering this area as a valid supply or demand zone. For instance, here, the price was consolidating during the Asian session before the London market's liquidity entered. This consolidation area then becomes an excellent demand zone for seeking long trading opportunities. We protect our trade with a stop above this zone and can set multiple targets. However, like order flow areas, consolidation zones can also sometimes be quite extensive. If we enter a trade at the beginning of a movie and place our stop below it, our stop loss could become excessively large. In the following section, I'll share some of the best techniques we use to enter trades more effectively. Now, let's explore some of the best techniques for trading supply and demand levels and securing a better entry price. First and foremost, we always see trades with a risk. We reward ratio of at least 1 to 2 before reaching our initial target. Our initial target is the most recent high that the price has recently reached. If your setup offers a 1 to 2 risk to reward ratio, you can position your entry right at the start of the order block and place your stop just below the nearest swing low to allow for price fluctuations. However, if your order block is relatively small, you might consider giving your stop more room to accommodate potential market fluctuations. On the other hand, if your order block encompasses a larger zone, you can position your stop slightly below its end. Here are two entry techniques when dealing with a large order flow or consolidation area. In the first technique, instead of entering a trade at the beginning of the zone, we opt to enter at the midpoint and place our stop just below it. This approach allows us to reduce our stop size significantly. The rationale behind this technique lies in optimizing both our supply and demand area and our entry and exit points. Another technique we frequently employ is waiting for confirmations on lower time frames, which is a practice we often prefer. Regardless of how strong your trading zone might seem, there's always a chance that the price can disregard it and break through. We've already discussed multiple entry techniques for lower time frames, such as change of character entry or retracement levels. However, it's crucial to understand that when dealing with a large trading zone, we require more confirmations before entering trades. This is because the market tends to target early buyers and sellers. Sometimes, when the price enters a substantial demand or supply zone, it generates numerous false signals before a reversal takes place. Therefore, we emphasize the need for double confirmation following a change of character on the chart. So, what exactly do we mean by change of character? Let's illustrate with an example. Imagine we're in a downtrend, with the market consistently forming lower lows and lower highs. Suddenly, the price exhibits a change of character by violating the prior market structure high, suggesting a potential reversal. In such cases, we look for rejections from the recent demand area created by this change of character movie. However, to reduce the risk of a false signal, we wait for a double confirmation. This means we wait for the price to break the new high to the upside, creating a fresh structure level. This way, we not only have a change of character, but also a continuation of the market structure, providing us with a double confirmation. Subsequently, the newly established supply and demand levels should be respected. Let me illustrate this with a chart example. 
consider the clear downtrend we observe on the 4-hour chart. If we mark this order flow area, we find that it provides a sizable zone for trading. Therefore, we zoom in on the 15-minute chart to seek confirmations for entering short position. On the 15-minute chart, we notice that the price initially gives a false change of character signal, but then proceeds to move upward. In this case, a double confirmation strategy would involve waiting for the price to break below the newly formed structure level to confirm the reversal. As usual, I'll open the TradingView chart to guide you step-by-step -step through our thought process when trading opportunities present themselves. Here, we're looking at the 1, our chart for the EURUSD pair. We've recently broken above a significant key level, which hints at potential upward momentum. Additionally, we observe fair value gaps, indicating bullish strength, and this order block presents an ideal opportunity for a long trade. Now, let's zoom out to the 4-hour chart to gain a broader perspective of the market. On the 4-hour chart, we can see that this area holds significance as a higher time frame level, as it has previously rejected the price on multiple occasions. However, the price action is displaying signs of weakness, suggesting a potential upward breakout. This inference is drawn from the fact that the rejections have been gradually losing strength with each attempt. It's plausible that we might witness an even weaker rejection before the eventual breakout. In any case, our anticipation based on the one-hour chart is that the price is heading towards the close of these candles. Even if a reversal is looming, our plan is to open a buying position right on this order block. We'll place our stop below the zone and target the close of the latest high. The price triggers our order during the High Liquidity London session, which serves as an additional confirmation that we're on track to witness the desired move. So that wraps up this video. I hope you found it valuable. If you did, please show your support by hitting the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.